Storm King Art Center is this beautiful art center in upstate New York filled with gigantic abstract sculptures. And they're really cool in part because they're so big and they're also like very beautifully situated within the landscape. Um, and they're very playful forms. You almost want to just climb on them. They almost look like uh, playground equipment. And every single one of these sculptures has a sign around it saying, please do not climb on or play on the sculptures. Don't touch. And I'm looking at these neat looking sculptures and I'm wondering if you guys could figure out a way to design playground equipment that people could actually climb on and play on and digitally put your creations into a landscape. So I want you to go out with your cameras and I want you to find a spot outside that would be ideal for a new piece of playground equipment that you invent. And I want you to take a photo of that spot with its empty space with your phone. And then I want you to go home and I'm actually using a, a box from a food container. I think it had crackers in it. And I'm just going to start building something that I can make into a piece of playground equipment. So I'm using my ruler and I'm dividing the paper in half. I make a dot at the top and a dot at the bottom after measuring it. And I'm going to open up my scissors and I'm going to score along the straight edge of the ruler. When you score, you're only cutting the cardboard halfway through so you can get a beautiful um, bend in the cardboard that, that bends perfectly. So I'm just going to take the flaps at the end and I'm going to glue them together so it looks sort of like a slide. And then I've decided that I'm going to cut another strip of cardboard. And notice I make two dots at the end. And I'm going to score along the line. I'm bending it. And now when I cut, the line is perfectly straight. And I'm going to make measurements every half inch with my using my ruler. I'm just going to make a dot every half inch. And then I'm going to score every other, I'm going to make a, a score line along every other dot on the front. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the alternate dots on the back. So here I am, I'm just using the straight edge, I'm scoring it. And then I need to figure out where the dots are on the back. So I'm kind of taking my marker and the, the dots that I didn't, put the score line out. I'm marking it so I can see them on the back. Once I've done that, I'm going to flip it over and those dots, I'm going to use my ruler and make score lines. Only this time I got smart. I put a piece of cardboard underneath so I didn't ruin the table. So a half of the lines are scored on the back and the other half are scored on the front. And the reason why is because I'm going to fold it kind of like a fan to make a staircase. And now you can see that I'm designing a slide. So obviously, you guys can design slides, you can design swings, you can invent some interesting climbing equipment. Uh, the sky is kind of the limit, but I did want to give you some methods and techniques. Um, one thing that did not work all that great was glue. Um, maybe if you had a better quality glue, but those glue sticks, everything seemed to slide open or slide off. Um, it just didn't seem to be a great bond. So what I ended up doing was I ended up cutting little slits in the cardboard and slits in uh, the other piece of cardboard. And you just kind of slide those, um, those slitted parts together so that they, they lock in. So if you have a slit here and a slit there, and then you put little slits on the, on the other piece of cardboard and you match those slits up, and you kind of push them in, it'll hopefully uh, do a better job staying in place than the glue. So I did that. And again, I was just sort of making it up as I go along. You're going to discover new tips and techniques as you go. Um, but I just want to make sure that you guys um, have an idea of how to construct things. So I again, I just used recycled materials. You don't have to buy anything fancy. Um, I decided that my slide was collapsing and I needed a little kind of 
a post in the middle of it to keep it from collapsing. So I figured that out. Um, I, I just cut a, 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 a piece of cardboard and I decided that I was going to pinch the back and make a little cut in it. I just sort of pinched the back of the slide, made a little cut in it, and then I um, threaded the piece of cardboard through the back of the slide. So it, it's not staying. I can't get it to stay. The glue doesn't really work that well. So I just sort of figured out a different solution. I'm cutting along here, and I was going to just glue it on, but now I've decided instead to cut in the back and just slide those tabs in, and actually it stayed pretty nicely. So, you know, using, using different techniques other than gluing to attach something is um, you know, sort of coming up with a creative solution. So again, I tried to glue the slide onto a base and it kept collapsing. So I ended up scoring a hole in the base and just poking it through with the scissors and threading the tabs through those little holes in order to keep the slide up, right? And it actually worked pretty well. So you can see I'm just sliding it through, and then I kind of wrapped the end of the staircase underneath the end of the base and then glued it, and the gravity from the slide sitting on top of the base, the glue didn't pop off, and I did the same thing at the end. So now I have my slide, and I'm going to set about designing a another another creation so let's see what other recycled materials i can find in my house here we go a toilet paper tube that that's that can be kind of a fun slide so i think i'm going to make another little staircase just by making a back and forth fan fold If you want to, there's a lot of origami tutorials online. YouTube is filled with origami tutorials. If you wanted to do something interesting with paper folding, you could look that up. So I'm just cutting some slots in the in the end of the tube, toilet paper tube, and some slots at the top of the staircase and kind of matching those slots up. And it really is a very secure connection. Now I'm going to show you how to curl cardboard. Let's see. Here's my base. I'm going to make a base. I'm going to glue my slide down onto the base. And then I decided that I want to um, make my new park fun for skateboarders. So I'm going to take a strip of cardboard. And I've decided that I'm going to curl it. So after I set up my slide, I'm going to cut a strip of cardboard and I'm going to show you the trick for curling. And it's very similar to the trick for curling ribbon if you've ever done that wrap, by wrapping presents. So here's my, um, now I'm going to take my closed scissors and put it underneath and my thumb goes on top and you just start pulling it along and it will start to curl. So that can be really fun if you're a skateboarder and you want to do some tricks. I decided it would make an interesting thing for loop-de-loops. And now I'm, go I'm scoring the cardboard and I'm actually going to stick those slots into the cardboard rather than, rather than trying to glue it down and hoping it sticks. But you see I'm using the end of my, of my little loop-de-loop -loop thingy at, to measure where it goes. And then I'm scoring with the scissors and then poking the scissors through and cutting it. Actually, I had to use very little glue on this. Sometimes a stapler is very useful for these things. So now that I have my my um, playground equipment, I'm going to just show you some other things that I've played around with in the past. Um, my daughter made this out of toothpicks and Crayola Model Magic <coughs> years ago. And um, just some little round balls of Crayola Model Magic, and you can see it's old. It's got cobwebs on it, but I kept it. Um, so that's another thing you can do is just using found objects around the house and um, messing around with them. But anyway, I want to get into um, 
what to do next. So I'm going to open up. I emailed the pictures of the, I took some pictures of the playground equipment and I emailed them to myself. And I'm going to just download one of them. And I'm going to open it in Photopia. So you just go to Date Modified Today, and you should find them in your downloads. And now I'm going to start by uh, getting rid of the background. So the Magic Wand tool is hidden uh, underneath the other selection tools. But I, I clicked on the Magic Wand tool, and I'm just clicking on background areas and then hitting Backspace to get rid of um, different, to select and get rid of different uh, areas of background. Try and take the photograph on a neutral background that's a different color than your playground. Um, if you'll notice, I tried to deliberately make it so the gray cardboard was on the outside and not the patterns and decorations of the cardboard uh, cracker box um, so that there weren't a lot of distracting colors. And I'm just, uh, now that I've, another trick is to add another layer underneath and to fill it with black. And when you do that, you, it exposes all the areas that you still need to erase. So once I'm done erasing, I'm going to open up the picture the, of the uh, area where I want to build my playground. So remember, you had to go outside, take a walk, and find a nice spot where you think a piece of playground equipment could go. So I'm going to go back to my email. I emailed the picture to myself. And I'm going to find the, um, find the image that I wanted to put the playground on. Before I do that, I wanted to resize my image. So I did image, image size. I changed it from pixels to inches. And I decided to make uh, the DPI 300 and change it to about uh, 5 inches tall. Um, so resizing it, whenever you resize it, you have to make absolutely certain that you change the DPI to 300 because otherwise you'll have this tiny little file and you're losing all the detail. So um, I ended up hitting transform and then free transform and just, I, I wanted to stretch it out a little, but I realized that the canvas size was too small. I was going to make it go off the edge. So I did image um, canvas, canvas size, and I made the canvas size just a little bit bigger. That means the background, the image has more space around it. So once I change the, see how it's going to go off the edge if I transform it. So I don't want to do that. Um, so I ended up not doing that. I x that out, and I needed more space around it, so I did um, canvas size, and I made the canvas just a little bit bigger. I, I ended up making it, um, I think, 10 by 13. Now, the, the image is the same size, but the space around it is more. And then I did transform, free transform, edit transform, free transform, and I ended up, um, like, changing the angle, and then I ended up um, doing edit free transform again and stretching it wider and sort of squishing it. The idea was I wanted to make it look like it was sitting on the ground, not at the incorrect angle to the ground. Um, another way you could do that is to just look at the photograph that you're going to be putting the sculpture in and make sure that you're photographing it from the same angle. So now I'm going to open up my background. I think I have it in my in my email. I'm going to download it. This is the background that I want. And I'm going to open it up in Photopia. And then I'm going to take the um, select all, edit, select all. Or actually, I could just take the rectangular marked key, drag it over it, copy it and paste it into the background and just plunk it down there. Um, the next thing that I need to do is I want the, um, I want the uh, other slides. So I'm gonna, 
Well, first I'm going to do something called burning and dodging. So burning, that little hand thing that I have selected, that will make any pixels darker. So if I want to make the shadows on my playground equipment consistent with the lighting in the picture, i got to figure out what direction the light's coming from and where the shadows go. So what I'm doing is I know the light's coming from the right, so I'm putting darker shadows on the left-hand side of the, of the playground equipment that I just created by using what's called the burn tool. So I'm making it um, not hard at all. I want it to have a soft edge, but I want to use a big brush. So I'm adjusting the size of the brush, and I'm also using the dodge tool. The dodge tool is the opposite of the burn tool. It kind of looks like a lollipop, and wherever you dodge, uh, the pixels will become lighter. So I'm adding light and shadow to the playground equipment using the burn and dodge tool. Um, the burn and dodge tool are hidden underneath each other, so you have to keep switching between the two tools. Now I'm going to pull in another piece of playground equipment. I'm going to um, grab that, and I'm going to open it and remove the background on that. So here's my second piece of playground equipment. I'm going to use my magic wand. Um, I think I tried to select color range, but I ended up actually selecting parts of the playground itself, and I didn't like that, so I ended up uh, deselecting um, and just going back and using the magic wand tool. So if you use the magic wand tool and you click on an area and you hold the shift key down, you can actually select multiple areas, and then when you hit the backspace key, it will all disappear. So I've, I've selected multiple areas. Now I'm hitting, gonna hit the backspace key. A lot of stuff disappears. Select, deselect, and then go in with the eraser and really finish the job. And then if you wanna make sure you've really deleted everything and you don't have any um, pixels remaining, you can create another layer, drag it underneath, fill that with black, and it'll expose any of the little spots you missed. So when I'm done with that, I'm going to select all, um, edit, um, copy, and then I'm going to go back to the other uh, file, and I'm going to do edit, paste. I'm just going to rush through, and I've sped up the video um while I go through and erase stuff, um, just because it, it's um, the same process that I used before. You don't need to see it again. Um, and then I'm going to have to resize this image. Um, so I'm going to change the DPI to 300 um, and change the height of the document to maybe, I don't know, five or six inches. And once I've resized it, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to hit... Uh, select all, edit, copy, and then paste it into the other document. So I'm changing the DPI to 300. Um, let's see, I ended up making it about five inches tall. Select all, edit, copy, or I could just use the rectangular marquee, pull it over the area I want to copy, copy it, and paste it into my, um, my landscape. But now I'm going to have to figure out where I want it to go, what layer I want it to be on. So let's see, select all, edit, copy. Oh, I've decided to transform it, maybe squish it a little bit so that it looks like it's in the right perspective. And now I'm going to copy it and paste it into my landscape. And then I'm going to drag the layer down so it's in back of um, the, the other piece of play plant equipment. And I'm going to just overlap them, make them look the way I want. And then I'm going to use the burn and dodge tool to add in the light and shadows. Um, I'll just rush through that part because it's um, the identical process to what I did before. So I'll speed up the video. So consistent lighting is very important. I have to figure out where the light is coming from. It's coming from the right 
which means that uh, the left-hand side is in shadow. I have to adjust the burn and dodge tools so that they've got a soft edge. You adjust it the same way you erase, um, adjust an eraser or a paintbrush. Um, I'm going to use sort of a large, soft stroke um, to, to create the light and shadows and make sure they're consistent throughout the entire picture. Uh, make sure you're in your, the right layer. If you're dodging um, or burning, you're actually taking the pixels that are right underneath your cursor and, and changing how light or dark they are. So once I've done that, um, the last step is um, I may want to resize my entire image. It's, again, it may be too large, so look at the image. Make sure the DPI is 300. Um, I ended up um, changing the entire photo to be about 8.5 by 11 inches. I think I ended up with 8.5 um, by 11 um, so you want something, you don't want something that's so big that you can't print it in a regular printer. Um, and make sure, of course, the DPI is always 300 because when you're printing a big image, uh, you don't want to lose any of the detail or have your image pixelate. So um, the last thing that I wanted to show you was um, when I... When I saved it, I saved the entire thing as a PSD or a Photoshop document, but I also exported it as a JPEG. So export as JPEG, it'll just be this nice flat image. Um, it's a universally readable image, the JPEG image. And uh, I'm, But before I did that, I, I resized it. Otherwise, I would be saving this gigantic image. So I ended up, um, I think it was ended up being like, 8.25 by 11, 300 DPI. I resized it and I did um, export as JPEG and I also did um, save as PSD. The PSD is the file with all the layers in it. In case your teacher has any criticism or suggestions, you're going to absolutely want to keep your layered document so you can work on it later. Um, so that was the finished document. The only thing else I want to show you is the clone stamp. So this little stamp, if you go to the background layer and you hit the Alt button um, while hovering over the area that you want to clone, it will pick up those pixels. And then I, could, I made it another layer on the top. I added another layer on the top. And then when you just brush with the with the cursor, um, it'll it'll take that grass texture and cover over the edge of the playground equipment. So it's picking up the pixels from that bottom background layer, and it's putting them on a new layer. So it looks like the edge of the playground equipment is going into the grass. So I just went to the background layer. I used the little stamp. I hit the Alt button while hovering it over the area I wanted to clone, and then I created a new layer on top and added those grass pixels to the end. Just like the burn and dodge tool, just like the eraser and the brush tool, if you are using the clone stamp, you can adjust how hard and soft the edges are and how big an area you want to clone. So that's a, 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 night, a neat trick using the clone stamp to help the edge of the playground equipment blend in with its surroundings. It's one way to keep the, uh, the bottom edge from looking like it's floating on top of the background.